Okay, so today we're going back to basics and we're going to try and make something like this. If it'll focus. This is a stamp that I made many years ago, which I use quite regularly. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the steel is, because as if you're familiar with my channel, you'll know that uh, I very rarely know what I'm using. But this is the sort of thing we're going to make. And that's for stamping the nail holes actually into a fullered concave shoe like this one which is one I made earlier. Now it should fit snugly in the fullering nice and snug in there without it uh, bulging it too much or at all really and then at the back if I can get it in again if you can see there it sits almost to the floor. It's a, probably a 32 away from the floor and that's the bit that the pritchel will punch out. A nice little square. And the idea is that your nail should be able to push in and stay there. If you can see nice and snug around the nail. Not sloppy. That's better, that's focused. Good tight fit. And you've got a reasonable amount of pitch on there. And sticking out the bottom about a sixteenth of an inch. That allows you a bit to hammer in when you tighten the shoe up. Otherwise you're just hitting the fullering and it should just drop out. Same everywhere, just push fit. It should stay there. And as you see, get towards the heel. No pitch at all, or virtually none. So that's what we're going to aim for. This is a size 3. Um, but what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to use a size 5. Now these are Liberties. We use Liberties quite a lot. And I'm going to, as I say, I'm going to use a 5. Basically, just because it's a a fairly middle of the range size. Um, if I make it properly it will probably do five sixes and maybe sevens. So what I'm going to do to start with I'm going to cut the nail off and use it as a pattern. Now I'm going to use this nail in probably th three eight steel so I'm going to make the cut at 7 16th, I don't know if you can see there. So I'm just going to mark it. So you've got your, your 3 8 into your steel and your 16th sticking out. There you go. Nice little mark there, you can just see it. And that's where I'm going to cut it and use that as my template. That is what I'm aiming for for the bottom of my stamp. Now I've just drawn it out to show you. So that's the nail head I've just cut. Now I want the bottom of my stamp to be the same as the bottom of the nail, but also these chamfers want to be the same. Doesn't matter how long that, that goes up, but it wants to be the same so that it sits in the fullering and doesn't open it up. And then the, the Pritchell wants to be a gnat's bigger. Just a very gnat's. And you can see there where I've drawn it's just slightly mushroomed out. And that is what will make what the stamp has done pop out the bottom. Nice and neat. It will shear it out really neatly. Well, that's the theory. So, I've cut my nail. And just tidied it up. It's pretty tricky to hold on to this, but you can just see that's what I'm aiming for. Now I found this bit of old uh, breaker point. It's obviously a broken one, and they usually make these out of something pretty decent, like S7 which is absolutely going to be ideal for this project. It's uh, air hardening steel and it's very tough. 
So I'm just going to put a point on it. Go very steady because you don't want to get it too long and too thin or too stubby. So just take your time and remembering that it's got to be wider one way than it is the other because the nail actually isn't square. It's like a, a rectangle. So just gently bringing it down. Now this stuff, if it is S7, you don't want to um, work it too cold. So don't let it get cold. And that is basically almost there. I'm just going to tidy it up with my rounding hammer. It may have seemed very quick and simple or easy, but it, it, it basically is. But I can bet your bottom dollar you won't get it right first time. Just bringing that down nice and even. I'm just going to check it over the top of the... Just so I can get a good idea in both directions. I think I'm probably going to leave it at that and I will file the rest. So just making sure there's no hammer marks. Yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. If I can show you how close it is, it's pretty damn good. It's not easy, but because this is still damn hot, but this is what I'm seeing. There you go. That's pretty good. And then the other way. Again, that's pretty damn good. We can file the rest of that. Now this is still hot obviously black heat but it's still hot so it should file pretty easy just gonna go all four sides get them nice and flat Take off all the scale, get them nice and even. I'm just going to check again how we're getting on. Yep, we're doing pretty well. Happy with that that way. Check it the other way. bit of a touch up. Just take the top off to bring that point nice and square and down to the size we're looking for. Just take your time, you don't need to rush. Because if you take too much off you're just gonna have to stick it back in the fire and draw it out again. So it's much easier to just Take it gently. This is a very fine file I'm using. You can hear it's starting to get hard as it's cooling. It's making a lot more noise. I think that's just about it. I don't think this is going to focus, but trust me, no, it's not, is it? But they're pretty good. I'm happy with that. We'll leave it there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to whip it off with the angle grinder. Could do it in the fire with the hot set but it means you've got to get it hot again. We don't need to so I'm just going to whip it off with the angle grinder. Well, so we don't need to get it hot yet. The other steel you could use for this is uh, H13, S7 and H13, they're both good steels for these types of jobs, they're, they're tough. 
they can stand hot work and a bit of abuse um, but they're air hardening so that makes life so much easier I'm going to muck about with quenching oil or water or whatever just get them hot let it cool in still air and basically that's it so I've just tidied the top up and for the handle I'm just using 12 inches of 3 quarter 3 8 full of concave because obviously if you're making a stamp to make shoes you're going to have plenty of this kicking about so I'm going to use the slope at the top and then about halfway back just fold the fullering in makes a nice comfortable handle just tidy up the end start off by knocking it in as if you're safing off the inside of a hunter shoe and just keep going or as if you're making an interference type shoe fold the fullering right in there you go simple as that I just want to get it nice and tight keep it straight made dozens of these over the years well I say dozens quite a few in 40 odd years and I tend to do it this way you can if you like if you haven't um, got a welder you can wire them put a bit of quarter rod around the stamp a couple of times and then what um, use that as the handle or you could even punch them and put a wooden handle in depending on how big your, your stamp head is but if uh, you haven't got access to a welder my advice would be take it to someone who has because this is so much an easier way there you go nicely folded in so much easier to do um, welded handles I've got my little Kempi out and we're using some AGA B10s which are 7018 low hydrogen rods which are handy for dissimilar metals I've put a little flat on the back of the uh, head just so it's a bit easier to position the handle I can figure out which way up I'm going to have it and so it's slope up and I'm just going to put a little tack on it because it's quite critical that you get this in the right place so I'm just going to check it now in all directions so it's straight up and down which is not quite let's open it up a bit so it's running straight up and down and also that it's running straight through the handle so that the, the rectangle of the the head is literally running right the way down the handle which this again isn't take your time to make sure that does because if you don't you'll never get your holes in the line you'll be moving your hand all over the place trying to get them all straight and when you're just trying to be quick, efficient. The last thing you want to be thinking about is moving your hand one way or the other to get your, your holes straight. So spend a bit of time, make sure everything's dead upright. Let's put a tack on the other side, I'm going to check it all again. Much easier when it's just got a couple of tacks on it to alter it than if you've welded it up and suddenly find it's wrong.
these low hydrogen rods that stick all sorts together. I've used these for years and years and they are the absolute dogs. Keep a nice close arc, tight arc with these things. You don't need much of an angle either. Get a nice flat weld. You can use these in all positions and all sorts. They're cracking. The only disadvantages you need um, at least 90 volts to start them. There you go. Do the other side. Now I sold a few packets of these a few years ago and I put in the advert that you needed at least 90 volts and I had some bloke bring them back. I can't get them to run. I said, well, have you got 90 volts? Well, my set's 150 amp. I said, yeah, but what are the volts? He was mistaking his volts for his amps. So I had to give him his money back. Well, I didn't have to, but I did. Got that one done. All right, give it a tidy up. You can see the colours coming down through there and up the top there that doesn't matter because we've got to get the whole lot hot again anyway so I'm going to get it hot and then let it air cool now I'm just going to lay it on top of the fire just build some a little bit of coke around it so I can see exactly what it's doing I don't want to get the, the tip too hot too quick I want the whole thing to come up to temperature. I'm going to take its time, let it take its time. I want it to really soak. You can see I've cut the video there a bit. Still want a little bit more. And again, let it soak. And that's what I'm aiming for. That isn't actually that hot in real life. It looks almost white hot there, but it's not. And I'm just letting it cool under the fire here, not resting on anything. That's nice still air down there. So I let it cool. I've given it a wire brush up, and I've taken the scale off the actual bottom with the file, just lightly over it to take the scale off. Because if you leave that on there, it it will stick in your fullering, and you won't get a very good job. So just take the scale off, clean it up, buff it up, and there you go. You can see that's running beautifully up and down the centre of the handle. So you don't have to muck about. Now this is quite a big tap, uh, tap? quite a big stamp. Um, so this will do some heavy shoes. Um, and so I've done it for a five, but it should cope with a six and seven easily. Might even go down as far as a four. But make enough stamps for all your different sizes of nails. And then as you become more proficient, you'll know which ones will overlap with others. But the more stamps you've got for the more nails you use, the better really. As I say, with experience you'll know what you can get away with what material thickness, width and all the rest of it that you can use certain stamps for Oh, well there you go, I was trying to show you that it worked it was sort of right but it is, trust me so thanks for watching next video will be making a pretzel I'm not doing it today because I haven't got any material 
So we'll make the Pritchell on the next one, and then we'll try them both out. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.